talks about a researcher recording the amount of time parent-child pairs spend on social networking sites uh, to test generational differences. So you have the results here below. Parents spend significantly less time, T of 29, T value, P, and effect size stated in Cohen's D. Now the first thing it wants to know is, was this design a matched or repeated measures design? Well, you should be able to tell this from the fact that you have a statement here of parent-child pairs. So because of this, we know they are not measuring the same person multiple times. Rather, because they understand that some families perhaps have more technological use than other families, they want to control for the family to which you belong as an issue that would be not independent. So it is likely that if a mother uses a lot of Technology, perhaps the children do too. Some homes just have more technology. So we wouldn't expect those observations to be independent observations. So we need to use some sort of control for dependent data. So a related or paired samples to you of some sort. Of course, it's not repeated though, because you're not measuring the same person in two instances or at two different times, for example, pre and post treatment. Now, Remembering that it is in fact a matched, not a repeated design, we have to take that into consider into consideration when we look at determining sample size. If you remember, our degrees of freedom is the number of different scores minus one. So 29, right, is the degrees of freedom for this t-test, which means we had 30 different scores. But if you had 30 different scores, and you had to measure a parent and a child to get each of those scores, you actually measured 30 times 2 equals 60 people in total. So this is an important thing to realize. That this differs. If you had had a repeated design with, with 29 degrees of freedom, it would technically be only 30 participants because you have one person measured twice. But here, because they're paired, we actually have two people to get each different score and therefore 60 people overall. Obviously we should be looking at our p-value to make the determination about the null hypothesis and we should be looking at Cohen's d to make our determination about the effect size, taking into account the cutoffs we've given at 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8. So this effect size would be determined by those cutoffs. All right, so that should be uh, help for this homework. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm sure the most confusing part here is people trying to understand the interrelationship between degrees of freedom, the N, and the sample size in the context of a very specific case of matched or paired designs.